A former immigration minister and Conservative leadership candidate Robert Jenrick has said that England's national identity is at risk. Writing in today's Daily Mail, Mr Jenrick warned that mass immigration and a work culture are threatening the ties which bind the nation together. Robert Jenrick joins me now to discuss this. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. What do you mean by English identity? Well, look, I'm a proud Brit and a proud unionist. I want a strong Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, but I'm also proud to be English. And I think it is incredibly important that just as Scottish and Welsh leaders speak up for their distinct national identities, so do English politicians as well. And I think the fact that too few have has been one of the root causes why our children are not being taught to understand and to celebrate our history in schools, why our public institutions in England have been too fast yeah, to I'm, denigrate I'm our culture. I'm going to interrupt you there, sorry. What is English identity? Well, just as every nation has its own distinct history and culture, so does ours in England. What just, is it? Just as we would know what... Uh, you know, a Frenchman would know what France yeah, stands what, for. What and, is English uh, identity well, then, Robert Jenrick? Well, what it's, is it? It's the, well, it's the history and the culture of our country. And I think England has an incredibly proud history. We have achieved so much in the world and we should be celebrating that. We should be teaching it to our children. Our public institutions should be ensuring that it is passed on to the next generation, not carelessly denigrated and dismissed. And we should be ensuring that we don't... Uh, lose it through mass migration and having such large numbers of people coming into our country in every year, not just in recent years, but over many years, has understandably made it very challenging to successfully integrate people because one doesn't arrive immediately in a country and fully understand and appreciate the history and the values of that nation. And that's what I want to change. And just as Scottish and Welsh politicians would speak uh, with great pride about their own histories and identities, so I think it's right that English politicians do the same. If you can't describe what English identity is, how is anybody coming here meant to understand that? Well, I don't think, with great respect, that you distill the identity and the history of England into a soundbite, like you're asking but, of me. You, no, you, there are things that I love about this country. You've tried to distill it in an op-ed for the Daily Mail, haven't you? Well, That's what you've tried there, to do. When I think we've no, I think I made a very now, different so... point to that. With all due respect, you, I suspect, are trying to dismiss a British or an English politician speaking about our national identity. I think it's incredibly important that we do talk about it. And but I don't, I don't think that you distill you it into. English identity. I don't think you distill it into a soundbite. I think it is something well, that some people examples. across our country know about. Give me some examples, then, of what English identity represents. Well, to me, it is the distinct history of our country. It is the great things that, as a country, England has achieved in the world. It's our values, it's uh, the courtesies and manners that we have as a nation. I don't think you would be asking a Scottish politician or a Welsh politician right now what is Scottish identity? I would. A Welsh, I would ask them Welsh the same identity. Thing. You're making the very point, if I may say, that I was setting out to do in my article in the Mail. It's the fact that influential people in our politics, in our media, in our civil service, feel afraid to speak about our national identity, feel that it's not something that we should be championing and handing on to the next generation, that mm. I think has meant that it started to fray in recent decades. And yes, I, I want you, to change you said, that. You said, Robert Jenry, that the ties that bind us together are fraying. What are the ties that bind us together? Well, it's exactly what I've just described. It's our history. It's the common culture and values that we have in England, just as one would have in Scotland and Wales and Northern do, Ireland. Do you think English history has been positively shaped by immigration? Well, England is a country which has emerged over the centuries and those who've come to our shores have contributed to it and made it richer. But it is also a fact that the very large numbers of people who've come in recent decades have made it much more difficult to maintain a sense of unity and national identity. I think mass migration has eroded our collective sense of identity and it's been particularly prevalent in England and in English cities where the bulk of mass migration has been seen. And that's why I want us to take a step back. I want us to return to the historic norms of mass migration, 
Uh, you know, before 1997, net migration over 25 years was 69,000. In the 25 years since Tony Blair became our prime minister, it's been 5.9 million. And that is just far too high. That has made it impossible to successfully integrate people yes. and to ensure that we have the sense of national togetherness and identity that I want to see. You're, you're promising that if you were to become leader and perhaps even went on to become prime minister, you would cap things at 100,000 a year, which is very similar to something David Cameron promised and never achieved. Well, no, it's very different, my policy, actually. What I'm saying is that we have a legally binding cap set by Parliament in the tens of thousands or fewer. We've never had that in the history of this country. Well, by having Parliament itself set a legally binding cap, the public will have confidence that it will actually be delivered this time. And then we'll bring migration down to the historic norms that we've enjoyed as a country, and that will make it easier for us to successfully integrate people and to tackle all the other issues that flow with mass migration, like the housing crisis, difficulties accessing public services, and foreign labour undercutting the wages of British people. That's what I want to achieve if I'm lucky enough to, to lead this party in the future. Mm. Who, who is at fault then over the last 14 years for the what you perceive to be the immigration problem? Look, I think this is not an issue of which any one political party is responsible. This goes back over decades. You, you mentioned, Tony Blair. Over you mentioned decades. Tony Blair being the Labour leader and it started under him. I, so I've you've been made it painfully, political. I, I have been painfully honest that mass migration has been a failure of both political parties. It's been particularly prevalent in the last 25 years, mm. where we've seen the historic norms, which were low and manageable levels of migration, completely upended, and very large numbers of people coming into our country, which put immense pressure on housing, on public services, and on the ties that bind us together in our national identities. And that's what I want to change. Both the last Conservative government and the last Labour one are responsible. And I worry now that this new Labour government is going to set us on an open door immigration policy that will exacerbate rather than easing these challenges. In your piece, you lay a lot of the blame for not being proud of being English at the door of what you describe as the metropolitan elite. As someone who went to a fee paying school, and Cambridge and worked as a corporate lawyer and then a director at Christie's. Are you not part of the elite? Look, I grew up in small town Britain. My politics are rooted in my family in Wolverhampton, in the small towns that I represent. You, in, have a, you had in a North privileged upbringing, did you not? You had a privileged well, my, upbringing. My, my parents were working class people and proud of it, who set up a small business in the black country. Those are the, my values, and I represent those people. I'm in politics to support those people and the values and principles and identity that they care about. I worry that too many politicians, too many in the media, too many in our civil service are too quick to denigrate British and indeed English identity and values. And I always fight against that because millions of people in our country feel that their voices are not being heard. Robert Jenry, thank you. Thank you.